In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, we praise you, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you, we glorify you. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful privilege you have given each one of us. Though we are small in number, I thank you, Lord, for these disciples who have made it, who have really taken time to be here in this class, have been committed to the word, have really been on this journey, listening to your word, experiencing that joy, that peace, experiencing this mode of preparation so that Lord, when we celebrate your birthday, when we celebrate this, this, this Christmas season, we can truly appreciate the very reason for which you came on this earth. The very reason you, you entered this planet which you created and became one with your creation. Lord, today as we study about this great man whom very little is spoken about except what he really did and what he really followed without a word recorded in scripture. Help us Lord to emulate this great man by the name of Joseph a descendant of David, the son of Jacob, and the foster father of Jesus and the husband of Mary. Help us, Holy Spirit, to get more and more revelation out of a man whose words were none, but whose actions spoke so loud that even today we can look at this great man and also learn to live like him. Learn to be people of few words, but people of action, where our words do the talking. Today, as we study of jo on Joseph, as the title and as the title says, Joseph let his his actions do the talking. Today, Lord, as we listen to the Spirit of God talking to us, let our life be a life of action where our actions can speak louder than the words that come out of our mouth. Today, Lord, as you teach us, make this teaching simple, easy to understand, make it practical for us so that we can apply it in our day-to-day -day life and live the victorious life that Jesus has already won for us. We thank you and we praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So warm welcome to you, my brothers and sisters. You know, as I was preparing for this uh, topic on Joseph, which I talked to you yesterday about, today's gospel is not about Joseph, but it is about a man called Zechariah, because it is talking about the birth of John the Baptist. But we are not going to talk about John the Baptist today. We are not going to talk about Zechariah today, but we are going to talk about Joseph, the husband of Mary, who was the foster father of Jesus. And you know, my brothers and sisters, as I was reflecting on Joseph, I was reminded of my own school, where I schooled when I was, you know, right from the kindergarten to the, to the 10th standard. For 11 years, I studied in a Jesuit school, St. Brito's. And that school had a motto which says, Facta no verba. Facta non verba, which means deeds, not words. And as soon as I was preparing that, the Holy Spirit said, this is the topic that you can, you can actually put for this topic today because Joseph was a man who never spoke much. He let his deeds, he let his actions do the talking. And you know, my brothers and sisters, the first time, the first time we hear about Joseph in, in the gospel, is about Joseph being the husband of Mary in Matthew chapter 1 verse 16. In fact, in Matthew chapter 1 verse 16, it gives us the ancestry of, jo of Joseph. So let us read Matthew chapter 1 verse 16. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called the Messiah. So brothers and sisters, Joseph, according to his ancestry, was a descendant of Abraham. He was a descendant of King David and he was the son of Jacob. That's all we know about Joseph's background. He came from the Abrahamic line. He also had David in his ancestry. 
and his father's name was Jacob and it says this man Joseph was the husband of Mary who was the mother of the Messiah and the name of the Messiah was Jesus now I want to take you a little further into Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 25 because it talks about the birth of Jesus now listen to this my brothers and sisters before Mary and Joseph came to live together Mary and Joseph were already engaged they were engaged to get married in fact the word of God says he was betrothed to Mary whom he was engaged I mean they were not living together but they were engaged to get married I want to read to you verses 18 to 25 onwards let's read it very slowly because we are going to learn something out of these verses now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph but before they lived together she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit her husband Joseph being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace planned to dismiss her quietly now listen my brothers and sisters you know the, the birth of Jesus has been mentioned in the book of Matthew which we are reading right now and it is also mentioned in the book of Luke and if you carefully study both the Gospels of Matthew as well as Luke and you compare the two Gospels you will observe that Matthew has written the birth of Jesus from Joseph's perspective whereas Luke has written it from Mary's perspective so Luke is Mary's man and Matthew is Joseph's man if you literally want to put it that way because Matthew is writing the birth of Jesus from how Joseph saw the whole situation and you know my brothers and sisters we are going to study about this man Joseph today whom very little is written about in fact you don't even hear a single word that Joseph ever spoke which has been recorded in scriptures you know my brothers and sisters please understand if somebody has never opened their mouth and spoken anything how can you study about somebody unless he has said something because the word of God says what a man what is in a man's heart that will always come out of his mouth you know if you if you know when we counsel people please listen to this when when anyone counsels somebody he always wants to hear what the other person in front is speaking and as the person in front begins to speak the one who is counseling him begins to get an idea what is inside that person's heart what is he thinking about what is stored in his heart and and in order for us to understand who really Joseph is what is he thinking about what is he really you know planning to do we need to hear what Joseph really spoke but you know my brothers and sisters you don't hear in scripture a single word about Joseph not a word that has been spoken about Joseph you know my brother says, surely Joseph was not dumb surely he was not dumb and he surely would have communicated with people around him you know how could he have you know made carpentry items for people without speaking to them he was a carpenter so surely when he when people came to him to ask them to make a table or a chair or a sofa surely Joseph would have asked the specification what they want so surely he would have spoken words later on when he starts quoting Mary he begins to know that Mary is his wife surely he is going to start you know meeting Mary how would he have not been have spoken to Mary and told her that he loves her and he wants to marry her he would not just have made some sign I want to get married he would have opened his mouth and told Mary something Mary I love you you know I enjoy your company I would like to get married to you something he would have spoken but you know my brother says nothing of that sort is ever recorded in scripture how could he not have communicated with anyone and yet lived to become one day the husband of the mother of the Messiah and the foster father of the Son of God how could a man like that if he never spoke a word surely Joseph spoke the words you know my brothers and sisters Joseph was absolutely like any normal human being you know he would have said things normally he would have said he's feeling hot he's feeling cold he's feeling upset he's feeling you know he's feeling happy he's feeling joyful there would have been some expression which you know which, which Joseph would have expressed in his lifetime but the Holy Spirit 
did not inspire a single gospel writer to write a single word spoken by Joseph. You know, Joseph was a very important person in God's plan of salvation. Please understand my brothers and sisters. Joseph is a very important figure in the plan of salvation. We, we consider John the Baptist a very important figure because he's preparing for the Messiah. We understand that even uh, Mary is a very important figure. We understand the angels. We understand Gabriel. We understand that even the people around who were there they also were in some way contributed but what about joseph nobody thinks much about joseph he is the unspoken man who in the, in the entire scriptures but brothers and sisters listen to this it is obvious that joseph did more of his talking with actions or with inactions than his words Please let me say this again. The first quality of Joseph that we are going to really highlight today is Joseph did more of his talking with actions or with no actions than his words. I want you to go back to verses 18 to 19. You know, 18 to 19 tells us about in, in, in Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 19 tells us something very important. What happened regarding Joseph's situation during the birth of Jesus? Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. You know my brothers and sisters, we are, we are <laughs> studying today specifically of the character of Joseph. You know, the word of God says, when Joseph, before he was to live with Mary, he was engaged to, to Mary, and before they came to live together means what before they shared the same marriage bed, bed together before they really consummated the marriage Mary is found to be with a child from the Holy Spirit now Mary knows because she has had an encounter with uh, angel Gabriel and she knows that God, angel Gabriel said that she will conceive of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will come upon her and she will bear a son and Mary responds to that but what about Joseph? Joseph knows nothing about it. It's not recorded in scripture that Mary ever told Joseph about it. So this implies brothers and sisters that Joseph wasn't told about Mary's pregnancy but discovered that Mary was pregnant by observation. You know, if Joseph observed Mary before she went to Elizabeth's place, Joseph would have said, Mary, if you're going for three months, look after yourself, take care, take enough, you know, stock along the way, look after yourself. I'm going to see you in three months. I'm going to miss you. So he would have had a picture of Mary before she went to Elizabeth's place. But look at this brothers and sisters. It became obvious that when Mary comes home from Elizabeth's house after three months, that she is already pregnant. Three months she's been away from Joseph and Joseph now observes the woman that he's going to marry, the moment he's going to share the rest of his life is now pregnant and she is now very obviously pregnant because there are changes occurring in Mary's uh, body. Maybe her stomach is protruding, she has now got a, got a little bit of extra weight, she has changed the color of her face and there are so many changes that go along with somebody who is pregnant. You know my brothers and sisters, Joseph as soon as he must have observed that would have experienced a lot of pain he would have experienced a lot of you know anguish knowing that the woman he is marrying has let him down by having a relationship with someone else listen to this mary has had no relationship with anybody she is still a virgin but how would joseph ever think of a virgin pregnancy how would Joseph in the wildest dream ever think that Mary would have a child of the Holy Spirit? You know, my brothers and sisters, only a person who was insane would have said that it was possible since they never, ever had ever been heard of a virgin pregnancy. You know, my brothers and sisters, even today when we are so advanced, 
If somebody says that a woman became pregnant without having a relationship with a man, somebody will think that person is talking nonsense because it can never ever be that a woman can be pregnant without having a relationship with a man. And even for those people who are, you know, following science and doing things which are outside the Bible by having these, uh, you know, these artificial uh, uh, birth controls and having artificial pregnancies and all those things, even they know that even if though they have not had a physical relationship with a woman, yet that sperm has been moved into her uterus or there has been some external thing which again is ungodly but even if it has been done they know and they know that there has been some thing externally done in order to initiate that pregnancy and you know my brothers and sisters joseph might have spent a lot of time he might have spent a lot of his money he and even he might have sacrificed long hours at work Please understand he was a carpenter because he now is preparing to get married. Maybe he had worked hard to plan for his marriage, for his marriage prep, uh, reception. He would have even told Mary about all his plans for himself and for his family. Now all that is shattered all on learning about Mary's pregnancy. You know my brothers and sisters, to add to this, Mary must have acted so cool, must have acted so normal to Joseph oblivious to the storm that is taking place in Joseph's mind. Please understand, if the woman with whom you are going to get married is now pregnant when you have not even you know, been together and she's acting absolutely normal without showing any signs of remorse, without showing any signs of guilt, what is going to go on in the mind of that, of that, of that man whom she's going to get married to? You know my brothers and sisters, yet in spite of all the storm that is going on in Joseph's mind, Nothing is recorded about Joseph's words or any negative communication or any anger or any disappointment or even words that Mary has betrayed him. Isn't that amazing? You know, you know, brothers and sisters, when you when you understand the, the, the gospel from, a, from the point of Matthew, you begin to realize Joseph is going through a terrible situation in his life. He is engaged to get married to a, to a woman. He has been working hard. He has put all his dreams into this woman called Mary. And now he finds out that she is pregnant. But you don't hear anything although i am expressing to you as a man what would be going inside a person who is going to get married to a woman who is already pregnant without that relationship with the man she is going to get married amazing regarding the the character of joseph you know my brothers and sisters he tells us in verses 18 as soon as joseph a righteous man he talks about joseph being a righteous man and you know my brothers and sisters Joseph, being a righteous man, doesn't want to do any harm to Mary. Another second beautiful character of Joseph. Joseph has an amazing temperament. He is patient and he is not offended by this turnaround in his life. Can you imagine, brothers and sisters, if anyone has been investing so many months and some years in a courtship with a woman and that woman is finally found to be pregnant and she is now acting absolutely normal as though she has done nothing wrong, what would be going on in the mind of that, of that man when he finds himself that he has a woman who is getting married who is absolutely unfaithful? You know, my brothers and sisters, the character of Joseph is very evident here. An amazing temperament. He is patient and he is not offended by the turnaround in his life. But you know, my brothers and sisters, what we are going to know now is something I want to read to you. Verse number 19. In verse number 19, let us read verse number 19. Matthew chapter 1, verse number 19. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, plan to dismiss her quietly now brothers and sisters if nothing is recorded what joseph actually said and if he is doesn't want to expose mary to public shame but he has planned to dismiss her quietly surely for this to be recorded joseph must have spoken this to someone 
or if somebody right now is writing this under the anointing of the Holy Spirit in this case the gospel writer is Matthew but it is not mentioned that Joseph said something it is only said that Joseph is a righteous man he is unwilling to expose her to public shame and he has planned to dismiss her quietly you know my brothers and sisters another great character of Joseph Joseph is not going to let his frustration be made known to anybody. He plans to dismiss Mary quietly, repeat quietly. Listen, my brothers and sisters, anybody in Joseph's place is going to make a hue and cry about it. What an amazing quality of Joseph. He felt all the emotions any man would go through on what he knows now. What does he know now? He knows that his, that his wife-to-be is going to be having a child, but that is not his child. You know, my brothers and sisters, Joseph felt all the emotions any man would go through in what he knows now. He would rather inform his close friends, he would inform his family that Mary is having a child out of wedlock and get Mary into serious trouble. In fact, Mary deserves to be stoned to death according to the law. You know, my brothers and sisters, if, if, if a man who's going to get married to a woman finds out during those days that that woman is marrying, has now having a child out of wedlock. She has gone and, you know, literally slept with somebody else and she's going to have a child of somebody else because Joseph doesn't know this is a virgin pregnancy. What is he going to do? He's going to be mad. He would rather want that woman to be completely destroyed and in serious trouble. And the law gives him the added fodder, gives him the added encouragement that this woman should be stoned to death. But my brothers and sisters, we hear nothing of that sort. We hear nothing about Joseph planning to do anything like that. How could Mary have told Joseph about a virgin pregnancy? You know, my brothers and sisters, somebody would say, Are you Joseph? Go to me, uh, go. Um, I mean, somebody would say, Mary, go and tell that Joseph, you had an encounter with the angel. Tell him that you are pregnant with the Holy Spirit. Tell him that, you know, uh, angel Gabriel came and this child, I have not slept with anybody, but this child of the Holy Spirit. You know, my brothers, and sisters, how could Mary tell Joseph about a virgin pregnancy? It would have been impossible, especially after she had gone for three months to visit Elizabeth. Look at everything in the natural is against Joseph, is against Mary how is Joseph going to be convinced that Mary has been at home because Mary was not at home in Nazareth she has gone to Hebron to visit her cousin Elizabeth but you know my brothers and sisters it was it was simply wisdom on Mary's part to just keep her mouth shut and let the Holy Spirit do his job you know my brothers and sisters please listen to this there is so much that we can learn from here Mary has been called by God in order to be the mother of the Messiah. Is that right? If Mary has been called by God to be the mother of the Messiah without having any relationship with a the man, then Mary should only trust God in order to bring this to pass. So if she knows that the Holy Spirit is the cause of a pregnancy, then why should she open her mouth and tell Joseph? Because anyway, Joseph will not believe that. Jo her, Mary's mother will not believe it. The Pharisees and the scribes will not believe. Any person in the right frame of mind will never believe this. So even if she tells Joseph, you know, Joseph, this pregnancy is of the Holy Spirit. Joseph is not going to remember, uh, is not even going to believe it. But you know, my brothers and sisters, God gave such wisdom to Mary to keep her mouth shut. And you know, my brothers and sisters, we can learn so much from Mary's example. We can learn so much from Joseph's example. Two things we can learn. Let's keep Mary because Mary, we have already seen what Mary spoke about. But we can learn so much from Joseph's example. You know, my brothers and sisters, at that time, listen to this. At that time, the law enabled Joseph to take action against Mary. Because now when he knows that Mary is going to have a child, he can just go to the authorities, he can go to the Pharisees, he can go to the priests, he can go to the scribes and they are going to enforce the law and have Mary stoned to death, that too in public. But what does Joseph do? Joseph, my brothers and sisters, does not allow this thing to happen. The verse 19 says, Joseph is a righteous man. 
You know, my brothers, that this is a very interesting uh, point indeed. As I said, the law provided for public disgrace and even death for the woman who was unfaithful to her husband. It was mentioned in Leviticus chapter 20, verse number 10. I want to show you Leviticus chapter 20, verse number 10. Gave in the law, it was written that any woman who had a relationship with a man outside her marriage, now she's already engaged to be married, she will be stoned to death. Let us read Leviticus chapter 20, verse number 10. If a man commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall be put to death. So it is very clear that Joseph had the option in order to put Mary to death. Yet, my brothers and sisters, Joseph is spoken of as being a godly, righteous man because he was not going to execute the full power of the law upon Mary. And you know, my brothers and sisters, many a times you and I, if somebody wrongs us, listen to this very carefully. There is something we can learn from Joseph. If somebody has wronged us, somebody has taken our property, somebody has taken our, you know, any of our items, somebody has, you know, caused any harm to us. What is the thing that we do? We immediately want to give them tit for tat. We want to really, you know, put them in their place. We want to show them that, you know, we have got the law with us. We have got the power with us. We've got the clout with us. We have got the influence with us to show that person that we can put him in his place. But, you know, my brothers and sisters, Joseph is said to be a righteous man and he's not going to use the law in order to destroy Mary. The word of God says he's planning to send Mary quietly away. You know, my brothers and sisters, another beautiful trait of Joseph. Joseph is a man of mercy. Joseph is a man of compassion. Joseph is not vindictive or revengeful. What a great quality of this godly man. You know, my brothers, if somebody hurts us, we will always wait for the right opportunity to get even with that person at some stage or another in our life. That is what we are. We are vindictive. We will keep it. And when we find the right opportunity, we will go pouncing on that person because we want to settle that score with that particular person. But we don't hear anything about it as far as Joseph is concerned. Joseph is a righteous man. Joseph says, even though the law allows me to take revenge, allow the law for me to get justice against this woman, I am not going to do that because I am going to allow God to judge this woman. I'm going to allow God to do what is necessary with her. And you know, my brothers and sisters, Mary doesn't tell Joseph. Joseph doesn't want to disgrace Mary. And what a wonderful combination that is when you have parents like that who are going to raise the son of man. You know, my brothers and sisters, the fact that Joseph was not going to put Mary away, was going to put Mary away privately, that he did only goes to show that he didn't believe it was a virgin birth. You know, the very fact in verse number 19, it says Joseph was a righteous man and he wants to put Mary away privately only because he doesn't believe it's a virgin birth. And anyway, brothers and sisters, who would anyway alone believe that, you know, it was a virgin birth? You know, personally, if you, if you ask me, I would never believe that myself. Indeed, there, are, there isn't any scriptural evidence or record that Mary told Joseph what had happened to her. Joseph discovered that Mary was pregnant only by observation. And you know, my brothers and sisters, that had to be after she came back from Elizabeth's house, which meant she was at least three months at Elizabeth's place. And in three months, a lot of changes can take place. Maybe Joseph is thinking in his mind, you know, maybe I'm a carpenter. Maybe Mary found somebody with a Mercedes. Oh, not a Mercedes Benz because there was still not Mercedes. Maybe she found somebody with a big house. Maybe somebody with lots of money. Maybe she Mary found somebody who was not going to be a carpenter, but she was going to be some businessman's uh, uh, wife. Maybe you never know. She found a, a man who was much more wealthier than Joseph. And you know, my brothers and sisters, scriptures doesn't say emphatically whether Joseph was told that what uh, told by Mary what had happened to her. It is it is not mentioned anywhere in scripture 
that Joseph had ever told Mary or Mary had told Joseph what had happened to her that she had an encounter with angel Gabriel let us go to verse number 20 let us see what really happens in verse number 20 but just when he had resolved to do this an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said Joseph son of David do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. This is the first time, my brothers and sisters, you read in scripture where God gets involved in Joseph's life. This is the first dream that Joseph is having, which is recorded, where the Holy Spirit is now sending an angel and the angel is talking to Joseph in a dream. You know, my brothers and sisters, Again, scripture does not say that the first time he had heard the truth was when the angel appeared to him in a dream. We don't know. But here is where we can say that Mary did not, you know, influence Joseph by telling him what had happened to her. You know, my brothers, says, just understand this. If Mary had to tell Joseph that, you know, angel Gabriel came to her. And he had to tell her that angel Gabriel said to her that she would be pregnant out of with, even though she's a virgin. You know, what Mary told would have made his dream easier to you know, dismiss as something that Mary had planted in Joseph's head. Instead, Mary left this situation to the Lord and trusted the Lord to work it out. So what does God do? God speaks to Joseph in a dream in such a way that only God could convince Joseph to accept that Mary's pregnancy was by the Holy Spirit and Mary was a virgin. Please understand my brothers and sisters. Mary knows that this is God's idea, not her idea. God has uh, come there and told her that she's going to be the mother of the, of the Messiah. She's not going to open her mouth and tell Joseph she's trusting the Lord. On the other hand, because she's trusting the Lord, God is speaking to Joseph in such a way that now Joseph is being told that Mary is a virgin and that the pregnancy has been caused by the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, if, if we can only learn from how this whole thing works, when you begin to trust God, the Son of God will always intervene in your situation. You know, we read about this pregnancy, about, about Jesus. We read about Joseph and Mary and we think it will be reading only a history book. Yes, Joseph was a righteous man. Joseph accepted that. But look at the, the, the battle that is going into Joseph's head. Look at the battle that is going on in Mary's mind. And yet, the, they are just trusting the Lord because this is God's business. You know, my brothers and sisters, the reason why we get so carried away, why we are so worried, why we want to go and tell people about it is because we are not doing God's thing. We are doing our own thing. So we are so insecure that we want to tell people and get them to come to us so that we want to absolve ourselves and look so good in front of people. But it was not going to be the case with Joseph. It was not going to be the case with Mary. You know, my brothers and sisters, this particular pregnancy which will be from uh, will be a virgin pregnancy and that Joseph is now going to know that through the dream through that presence of the Holy Spirit that Mary is pregnant definitely was faith on Joseph's part to believe God's message and do what he did in verses 24 to 25 you know my brothers and sisters as soon as Joseph gets this dream He's, he's thinking about it. He's, 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 he's contemplating about it. I want to quit this woman. She has been unfaithful to me. God intervenes in that situation and tells Joseph, listen, Joseph, son of David, what is inside of Mary is of the Holy Spirit. She is a virgin. Accept her as your wife. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, what this holy man, what this righteous man, what this man of faith does when he gets up after that dream in verses 24 and 25. When Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son. And he named him Jesus. You know, my brothers and sisters, the word of God in verses 24 and 25 
most of the time people have never read it properly you know a lot of doctrines have come into play a lot of philosophies have come into play a lot of history has come into play a lot of corruption of the gospel has come into play and as a result verses 24 and 25 have never ever been you know openly discussed so today if you are going to listen attentively i want to show you something joseph did not have any sexual relations with mary until jesus was born that's exactly what it says in verse number 25 but no marital relations with her until she had born a son and he named him jesus it never said that joseph did not have any marital relationship joseph did not have any sexual relationship with mary she he never had any relationship with mary until jesus was born you know my brothers and sisters joseph did not have any sexual relations with mary until jesus was born but mary was his wife and he had normal relations with her, normal sexual relations with Mary after the birth of Jesus. And you know, my brothers and sisters, what is amazing? Listen to this. What an, what is, what an amazing man Joseph is. A man of great faith and a man who let his actions and his inactions do the talking. I want to show you a particular trait of Joseph here. When he comes to know that Mary is pregnant and that is not his son or that is not his child, he refrains from having any relationship, any sexual. He doesn't consummate the marriage. Listen, until Jesus is born, the marriage between Mary and Joseph is not consummated. Please understand my brothers and sisters, when God has put you together, the word of God says in the beginning, the, the word of God says in the book of Genesis, what God has joined together, no man shall divide. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and unites with his wife and they become one. And you know when they become one, they become one only through that sexual union. So the marriage of Mary and Joseph was not consummated until the Son of God was born in the womb of Mary. And you know, my brothers and sisters, many a times people have been given the wrong information. They begin to talk about the virgin pregnancy. Yes, it's true. She was the virgin pregnant. But Mary eventually had children from Joseph because they were joined together. They were not. They, Joseph was not told to become a priest or told to do celibacy in the home of Mary. Mary and Joseph actually lived as husband and wife and they had children even after that because the word of God tells us he refrained from any physical relationship with Mary until Jesus was born and started having normal marital relations with Mary after Jesus' birth. There are many scriptures that tell us about the brothers of Jesus. It tells us about the sisters of Jesus but today is not the day I'm going to dwell on that because we are going to keep our focus on Joseph. You know, my brothers and sisters, I want to take you now from Matthew to Luke chapter 2 verses 4 to 5. I want to take you to Luke chapter 2 verses 4 to 5. Again, what happens to Joseph when he comes to know now that his wife is pregnant, she's nearing the time of delivery and now he has to go to Nazareth in Galilee. Luke chapter 2 verses 4 to 5. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. You know my brothers and sisters the word of God tells us that Joseph went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee in Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was a descendant from the house and the family of David. What was he doing there? There was a census. And you know, the census enabled the government, enabled the Romans in order to have all those people listed there because those people who were listed would now need to be paying taxes. It says he went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and he was expecting a child. You know, my brothers and sisters, look at this godly man. His name is Joseph. If Joseph did not go to the town of Nazareth to get registered and to have Mary registered, you know, Joseph 
would not require to pay any taxes. Joseph went to pay his taxes because when he was registered, he now had to pay taxes. In fact, the book of Romans chapter 13 verse 8 tells us to owe no man anything but only love. And the context was specifically talking about taxes. You know, my brothers and sisters, Christians should pay the taxes. We should pay our income taxes. We should pay all the taxes that we are called to pay. And you must notice also one more thing in the scriptures that we read in verses 4 to 5. Joseph and Mary were not poor. They were not poor people. They were not beggars. They had enough money that they could pay their taxes. They had enough money to travel all the way from Nazareth to, to Bethlehem. And they, would have, and they had enough money even to stay in a hotel as if, the, if, if there was a place for them to stay. <coughs> Please understand my brothers and sisters. Joseph and Mary were not poor because Joseph was very happy to pay his taxes. He wanted to register his wife Mary. He, he traveled all the way from Nazareth to, to Bethlehem, which means it would have involved cost for him. And had he, had he found a place in the inn, he would have stayed there, but there was no place for him in the inn. And this godly man and this godly woman who is now going to bear the son of man, brothers and sisters, are going to give a birth to the child in a manger, in a stinking manger where animals are going to be there. You know, my brothers and sisters, God used an ungodly ruler. Remember, the word of God says that in because the, the ruler of that country had ordered a census, Joseph and Mary had gone to Bethlehem in order to register themselves. And, and, and when you understand in, in God's plan, God used an ungodly ruler to draw Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem and to fulfill the prophecy that was written by the prophet Micah. You know, my brothers and sisters, Mary could have delivered the child in Nazareth. But what did Micah the prophet write? Micah the prophet in Micah chapter 5 verse number 2. I want you to read that how an ungodly ruler brings this couple into Bethlehem and that's the place Jesus is born not in Nazareth he's born in Bethlehem Micah chapter 5 verse number 2 but you O Bethlehem of Ephrathah who are one of the little clans of Judah from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel whose origin is from the old from ancient days so brothers and sisters <laughs> although Joseph and Mary are living in Nazareth Joseph and Mary are living in <coughs> Nazareth she should not be traveling at this time in Micah chapter 5 verse number 2 here the prophet had already prophesied that the, the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem of Judea. And even though Mary has reached the very critical stage of her pregnancy where she's going to deliver the baby, God draws this couple into Bethlehem and that's the place Mary has her baby. She delivers the, the, the Messiah in the town of Bethlehem. Luke chapter 2 verse number 16. Let us go to Luke chapter 2 verse 16 and see now Jesus is already born and now shepherds are going to go to Mary and Joseph. Brothers and sisters, the story, the Christmas story is getting exciting. Now Joseph and Mary are already in Bethlehem. They have already given birth to their baby in the stable. And now God is going to bring some very unknown guest at the stable in Bethlehem to whom he's going to announce the good news of the Messiah. Luke chapter 2 verses 16 to 18. Let us read Luke chapter 2 verses 16 to 18. That will be complete. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. You know, my brothers and sisters, the word of God tells us on the night Jesus was born, the shepherds were in the field looking after their flocks and the angels, you know, the, the, there, was, there, was a, there was a big group of angels that appeared to the shepherds. And what did they tell the shepherds? We have come to give you good tidings. In the town of Bethlehem, in a stable, 
the Messiah is born. You know, my brothers and sisters, as I share this with you, I actually begin to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit because he's telling me that when the news about his birth comes to the, to the shepherds, they are sleeping by night. They cannot stay still. They cannot remain there in the, in the field. They immediately listen to the good news and they are out there in order to find out where the Messiah is born. And you know, my brothers and sisters, the word of God tells us in Luke chapter 2, verse 16 to 18. These shepherds went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known to them everything that they had heard from the angels. What did the angels tell them? The Messiah will be born. The child will be born. This, this, is, this is the child Jesus who's going to be the savior of the world. And these shepherds who are not even educated, they are only looking after sheep. They are the first ones to receive the good news. They are, they are the first ones to receive the good tidings of the birth of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, the whole country of Israel, listen to this very carefully. The whole country of Israel is waiting for the Messiah. But none of them are aware that the Messiah has already been born in Bethlehem. They know the scriptures saying in Micah chapter 5 verse 2 that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. Nobody, no Pharisees, no scribes, no priests, nobody knows that on that night the child has been born in a stable in Bethlehem. Everybody is going about life as usual. Just this Christmas will come and we will all go about our Christmas having our Christmas pudding. We will have our chicken. We'll have our turkey. We have already, you know, already soaked the fruit and having our own Christmas cakes. We will have our own little parties because of, of COVID-19. But while the Christmas celebration is going on, there will be so many people who will not even know that a Christ ever came to the earth 2000 years ago that this Christ saved us from our sins and now because we know the gospel we will all be saved we will only be interested in our celebration of one day brothers and sisters when you and I begin to understand that Christmas is not about one day, Christmas is every day because we need this good news of Jesus to go to the ends of the earth. We need to let everybody know that Christ was born to save the whole human race. Christ was born so that nobody would be lost. But tonight, but tomorrow night, then the day after tomorrow, there will be ringing of bells. There will be so much of celebration going on, maybe private parties. But none of the people who are outside ever know without Christ that they are going to be ever saved. And if you and I are the people who understand that we are saved because we have Christ with us, we are not going to hold this good news to ourselves, but we are going to go out and share the good news to others. We are going to tell people that this Christ is born and that he came to this earth to save you and me so that by believing in him, now we have eternal life. Brothers and sisters, the shepherds got the good news because the Lord Lord wanted to save the shepherds. Why didn't he go to the Pharisees? Why didn't he go to the scribes? Why didn't he go to the priest and tell them? He only told those poor shepherds. And what did they do? They come to the, to the, to, to the stable in Bethlehem and Joseph and Mary see all these things and they hear everything that is being said about Jesus. Joseph's faith is being strengthened by the news that he's receiving from the shepherds. You know, my brothers and sisters, Joseph gets a dream. He has never had an encounter with God on a personal level except through, through a dream. The angel has not come to him, unlike the angel coming to Mary and telling her she's going to be pregnant. But when Joseph hears those shepherds come to him in the stable and tell him, you know, we heard the angels come. They told us that the child is going to be born. This is not a normal child. This is an amazing child child what would it have done to Joseph's faith what would have done to this godly man who, who who decided that he's going to get married to this woman who is not even having his own child it is only going to strengthen his case it's only going to make his faith stronger for the things that are going to unfold in the near future brothers and sisters God has a supernatural way to make this man Joseph a strong man of faith he already had strengthened him in the dream to go and marry um, uh, Mary in spite of she not bearing his child. But when this news comes of the shepherds, 
surely it has strengthened uh, Joseph to such an extent that what is going to unfold in the months and the years ahead is going to help him to understand that this child is no ordinary child but is a child who is the Messiah the very child that God has spoken about who has come to come into this world let us go to Luke chapter 2 verses 21 to 38 I'm not going to read that because we are not we are not going to spend a lot of time on that but brothers and sisters in Luke chapter chapter 2 verses 21 to 28 we read that when Jesus was eight days old it was time for him to be circumcised you know according to the law of Moses every male child had to be circumcised on the eighth day and you know they were going to give him the name Jesus because that was the name that was given to him even by Mary was told that by angel Gabriel uh, Joseph was told that by by angel Gabriel in the dream so we believe that that name was now a confirmation to both Mary and Joseph that this was actually God who was involved in this. And you know, my brothers and sisters, as soon as Jesus comes into the temple, what happens? There is a man called Simeon who actually meets them and Simeon begins to prophesy everything about about uh, about Jesus he says Lord I want to thank you that I've my eyes have seen this salvation and I can now die in peace because of all these things that Simeon is saying you know my brothers and sisters I'm sure the the, the, the parents of Jesus that is both Joseph and Mary are completely amazed in fact it says in verse number 33 that the, the the parents of Jesus were amazed at what was being said about him and you know my brothers and sisters there was a special message for Mary he said that this child is destined for the fall and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts that will be revealed of those people and a sword will pierce her own heart. So brothers and sisters, that's what Simeon tells the parents. What about next? There's a prophet Anna. And prophet Anna also begins to prophesy. And you know, she begins to praise God because she has seen the Messiah. She's also a prophetess. And that is how this faith of Joseph and Mary is being strengthened by these prophets when they see the child Jesus in the temple because God is speaking to the shepherds he's speaking to the prophet Simeon and he's now speaking to the prophet Anna let's go back to Matthew chapter 2 verses 13 to 14 Matthew chapter 2 verses 13 to 14 remember Matthew is giving the gospel and the birth of Jesus from Joseph's perspective so it is appropriate for us not to linger too much with Luke but go back to Matthew because Matthew is going to give us more information about Joseph now after they had left an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said get up take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him then Joseph got up took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt you know my brothers and sisters the verses that we just read right now from Luke chapter 2 tell us that this dream and the instructions to Joseph about Mary and and Jesus and and fleeing to Egypt came after the departure of the wise men you know my brothers and sisters we all read about the wise men who had come from the east to meet Jesus and you know my brothers and sisters if you read Luke chapter 2 you will read that the departure of Jesus to Egypt did not take place from the Bethlehem stable it took place after Jesus had left the Bethlehem stable Mary and Joseph had left Bethlehem and had gone back to Nazareth so brothers and sisters if this is when Jesus, Mary and Joseph went to, his, uh, to, to, to Egypt, it definitely took place when Jesus was close to two years old. You know, my brothers and sisters, we always have our crib and in our crib, we always put the wise men as though they came to the crib. The, the wise men did not come to Bethlehem. They came only to the house in Nazareth. And therefore, brothers and sisters, we need to understand in Luke chapter 2 verse 22, it says, Jesus was presented in the temple at Mary's purification that is 40 days after Jesus' birth so after his this purification Joseph took Mary and Joseph and Jesus to Nazareth that is in Luke chapter 2 verse 39 it must have been at this time that the wise men came because after 
they left, Joseph immediately went to Egypt. You know, my brothers and sisters, in Matthew chapter 2, verse 14, it says that the Lord spoke to Joseph in a dream. And you know, my brothers and sisters, it appears that Joseph obeyed this command immediately he received from the Lord. And now he informed Mary and the little child Jesus, because he must have been two years old, that who would now have to run away to Egypt. So what does he do? He takes this child Jesus, he takes Mary in, in, during the night. That means it must have been before the sun came out. Before even the sun came out, Joseph, Mary and, and, and the child Jesus are fleeing to Egypt. You know, my brothers, please understand this from Joseph's point of view. Joseph had already communicated earlier. In, uh, Joseph had already uh, communicated in a dream, you know, Matthew chapter 1, to take Mary as his wife. God had already spoken to him in a dream. And by now, he was already aware that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. You know, if you read uh, Matthew chapter 1 verse 20, he was already told in a dream that this child is going to be a child, which is not going to be by the normal pregnancy. This child is of the Holy Spirit. His name is going to be Jesus. So he was already aware. By this time, the shepherds had already spoken about him. The uh, Anna the prophet had spoken to him. Simeon the prophet had already spoken to him. So already Joseph knew by now that this child is no ordinary child. And here we understand that as soon as he gets that dream in Matthew chapter 2 verse 14, Joseph is a very responsible man. This is a great quality of Joseph. A great quality of Joseph is now evident for everyone to see the responsibility of the man Joseph. You know my brothers, please understand, Joseph is not the father of Jesus, just a caretaker. And yet he understands the danger to the baby and the responsibility he has for this for this two year old child. You know, brothers and sisters, considering the insecure ruler that was there at that time, Herod, he was after this child and he did not know who this child was. And yet he was after this child. And now as soon as the wise men go, this man wants to exterminate every child who is two years and under. And by this time, Jesus is already two years old when the wise men come to meet him. But what happens? As soon as that dream is given to, 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 to Joseph by the Lord, that he's warned that he should flee to Egypt, Joseph could have said to himself, this is not my child. This baby is in danger and he, and he might as well be take no action about it. The thought of running away to Egypt, which is, you know, brothers and sisters from Nazareth, Egypt is about close to about 800 kilometers and it is not a small journey. You know, in those days, there was not the luxury of having any cars or having any scooters or having any trains or having any aeroplanes. There were no restaurants on the way. There was no booking to be done in hotels. And yet, brothers and sisters, to add to all this, there would have been the dangers of those roads. You know, they could have been robbed. They could have been beaten. They could have they would have to go through those terrains. And yet Joseph simply obey, obeys the message in the dream and is convinced that it is God who is directing his life and that of his family. Praise God for Joseph. He is a responsible man, a great quality. He has got nothing to do with the child. It is not his child. He has not consummated the marriage. He has not had any relationship with Mary. And yet this child is born to him. But yet by now, it is two years now. He has not having any more children out of Mary. This is the only child he's having. And yet this man is responsible. He's responsible for Jesus. He's responsible for the baby. He simply obeys and he goes on and takes the baby and his mother and flees to Egypt in spite of all the hardships that he's going to encounter. Let us go further and read Matthew chapter 2 verses 19 to 23. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea, 
in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazorian. You know, my brothers and sisters, again we see in this verse, in verse number 19, that after they have gone to Egypt, God speaks to Joseph again in a dream. This is the third dream of Joseph. The first dream was he's told to take Mary as his wife. The second dream he is told to take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. Now he's having a third dream where he's told now to return from Egypt and come back to the land of Israel. You know, my brothers, and sisters, someone could have thought that God was being so unfair to Joseph. You know, my brothers, and sisters, as I was reflecting myself, I thought this was really unfair on Joseph. God was really being so harsh on him. Can you imagine, my brothers and sisters, when he has to speak to Mary, he sends the angel directly to her. But when he talks to Joseph, he gives him a dream and there he gives him a message that could that could take, you know, my brothers, only faith on Joseph's part to respond on all three occasions. And Joseph passes the test on all the three occasions with flying colors. You know, my brothers, this brings us to a very important quality of Joseph. He's a man of faith and Joseph had to take all the major decisions in his life after getting connected to Mary every time by faith and faith alone. You know my brothers, just think for, think for a moment. When angel Gabriel comes to Mary, he comes to Mary physically, starts talking to her words, there is communication taking place. She has a question, she, he can clarify to her. But when it comes to Joseph, God is only talking to him in a dream. And you know my brothers and sisters, when you understand what a man of faith Joseph really is, you begin to understand why God has chosen Joseph to be the foster father of the Messiah. You know, it speaks a lot of the character of Joseph and what a great godly man he is to be chosen as the protector and provider of the holy family of Nazareth. You know, my brothers and sisters, please understand a few things about this man, Joseph. When he has already left uh, the land of Israel and gone to Egypt, he would have probably had to, you know, settle down all over again. Can you imagine when he has to leave Egypt and come back? What is the situation going to be like? Listen to this. Look at the inconvenience that Joseph is fa facing. He first has to hurry out of Nazareth and go to Egypt. That is the first thing he has to do because that is the, that is the second dream he has because he has to protect the child. In the third dream, before he gets the third dream and he's already in Egypt, he might have had to make arrangements in an alien country to stay there. Maybe there would have been strangers in that land. He has to find a place to work. He has to survive in that place. He has to find a place and he has to set it up. He has to find work to survive. And again, not knowing for how long he's going to be there, for, or for how long, and whether it's going to be short term, whether it is going to be long term, or whether he's going to remain there till his death. And you know, my brothers and sisters, he has to again be among the people there that he and he has to let them know that he's a carpenter so that at least he can carry on his trade of, of that of a carpenter. And again, what about the barriers of the languages? He has to go and speak to them in the language of the Egyptians. Here in, here in the land of Israel, he speaks a different language. They belong to the covenant of Israel. They are a chosen people of God. What about going and living in a pagan country where they speak a different language? Yet, brothers and sisters, Joseph is going through all these crises. And when everything has been set up, God gives him a third dream and tells this man, it's time for you, Joseph, leave everything that you have set up and now go back to the land which you belong. You know, my brothers, this, this godly man simply obeys after going through so many changes in his life. It seems his life is heading from one crisis to another, one change to another. It seems like, you know, God has really put him under such a tremendous test. And you know, my brothers, this, just think for a moment. It seems his life is heading from one stage to another and the thoughts of what he had earlier about quitting Mary and going away from uh, uh, probably bombarding Joseph. You know, Joseph had, that, had, had, that, had those thoughts earlier because 
when he was going to when he was going to find out that mary is pregnant he wanted to put mary away and he wanted to send her so that he could live on his own he could probably find another partner now that he's going through all these changes after getting married to mary again those thoughts could have been probably bombarding joseph and no my brothers and sisters joseph does not quit despite all the problems none of which he is responsible and he is not the cause of all these hardships for himself and his family praise god for joseph joseph has done nothing wrong in order to go for so many changes in his life can you imagine brothers and sisters if i am the one who's doing a sinful life i'm living something then i'm going to reap the harvest of all that i am doing in my own life what about joseph Joseph has done nothing wrong. It's only the circumstances, the situation, the world is still under the power of Satan. Satan is after Joseph. Jo Satan is after after Jesus. Satan is after Mary. He wants to disturb this family and God is only speaking to this family, speaking to Joseph and directing him what to do, where to go, and every time Joseph and his family are being disturbed. Let us go again and see verse number 22. What happens? He gets another dream. He has got the third dream to return. He returns back to the land of Israel, but by this time God speaks to Joseph again and Joseph gets his fourth dream. Let us read verse number 22. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. You know my brothers and sisters, again the Lord speaks to Joseph. You know, you know sometimes you begin to think to yourself, how much is God testing Joseph? Now by now, Joseph is becoming sensitive to his dreams because every dream that he gets and God is speaking to him, he has to respond by faith. So this is the fourth and the last dream that is recorded of Joseph and the result is Joseph simply obeys and his faith is a confirmation of how the prophetic scriptures are fulfilled. I want to show you brothers and sisters what it says in verse number 23. He shall He will be called a Nazarian. You know my brothers and sisters in verse number 23 it says he will be called a Nazarian. he shall be called a nazarin but if you read the old testament scriptures my brothers and sisters nowhere in the old testament it has been written it was only a spoken prophecy if you if you if you, if you understand what it says in numbers chapter 6 verses 2 i believe and again in the book of judges a person who was a nazarite was also identified a person who had taken a vow to be separated for the lord and for the kingdom of god you you find that with samson you find that with samuel you find that all the people of god who were who were separated they had to be a nazarite let us read for, uh, as an example numbers chapter 6 verse 2 which tells us about a nazarite speak to the israelites and say to them when either men or women make a special vow the vow of a nazarite to separate themselves to the lord so brothers this is although the 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 prophet says the the word of god says that this scripture was fulfilled it only was fulfilled through a verbal prophecy it is nowhere written in scripture but jesus was called a nazarene as spoken by the prophet and now he comes and lives in the country of nazareth remember he was born in the town of bethlehem but he was not a bethlehemite he was a nazarite because that is what it was already prophesied in scripture let us quickly again go to luke chapter 2 verses 41 to 52 we are not going to read that But this is a story of Jesus when he is 12 years old. And you know my brothers and sisters every year Jesus and his parents went to the festival for 3 years because that was the that was a festival of the Passover in the in the in the land of Jerusalem. So it was a very long journey. And now Jesus is 12 years old. I'm not going to go through the whole scripture, but what happens is after they have finished the festival, Jesus stays back the parents leave jesus they don't know he's not with the crowd they go and make a journey of almost 3 days and then when they don't find him they come and they return and you know my brothers and sisters the word of god tells us that joseph and mary went through great anxiety 
because they did not find Jesus with them and they came back and the word of God says us when Mary meets Jesus they say your father and I have been searching for you with great anxiety you know nobody ever realizes that this godly man Jesus is not his child and yet he now understands who really Jesus is. He's anxious. He understands that even though he's been given the greatest responsibility to, to raise the son of God, to, to be the foster father, to be the protector, to be the provider of Jesus, he has failed in his responsibility. But praise God, Jesus is found in the temple. But the point what I wanted to say was, Joseph went through all these anxieties with Mary when Jesus was, was lost in the temple. You know, my brothers and sisters, we can only understand one thing. When we think about Joseph, when we think about the man Joseph, all that he went through, the only thing we can come to know about this man, nothing he has spoken of, not a word is said about him. But all that we hear is Joseph always operated by faith. Joseph did not let his mouth do the talking. Joseph only let his actions do the talking. And if today, my brothers and sisters, as we prepare for Christmas, many of us are always excited. You know, we want to tell somebody, you know, how we feel, what is going on, who is troubling us. Let us be like like the person Joseph let us keep those things inside of us and if we want to tell somebody anything let us open our mouths and only speak the good news let the things that we do show the world around us that we really are people of faith let our actions do the talking like Joseph and today as we study Joseph let Joseph inspire us to be people of few words because it says the this tongue is such a small thing in our in our in our in our mouth but just like a rudder uh, with a small little rudder controls a big ship in the same way this tongue can control our whole life and therefore we need to keep this tongue under check but we can do the actions we do with our, uh, let our actions do the talking let the actions be actions or what the holy spirit is leading us to do and let our actions show that we really are people of faith this christmas let us go and give christ to somebody else maybe we will go and share some sweets maybe we'll go and visit somebody in the in the old home old home for the aged maybe we'll sing some christmas carols and entertain people but even in the midst of everything that we do let our only goal be when we open our mouth only to give the good news around let our actions be uh, actions of love and let us do less talking and let our actions show that we are really those people who understand that our actions can speak louder than our words when we operate in love and that too in agape love amen let us pray father in heaven we thank you and we praise you lord for giving us the understanding of this great man joseph whom you chose to be the foster father a person who's not a single word has been recorded in scripture holy spirit you never allowed the gospel writers to write a single word not even a yes or a no but what joseph did only by receiving those dreams and instructions through those dreams speaks volumes of the faith of this great man of god whom you chose to be the father and protector of your son Jesus today Lord as we reflect on Joseph as we prepare ourselves for the for the celebration of Christmas let this Christmas let Joseph be for us a source of inspiration so that Lord through the example of Joseph we also can become like Joseph in our own life allowing our actions to do the talking allowing Lord the love that you have filled in our heart to reach out to the people around us and help us to truly glorify you, to witness you, and to let the world know that Christ is alive, that Joseph, the spirit of Joseph, is still very much present in the lives of your children. We thank you and we praise you, Father, in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen.